Relationship Advice Update My, 31 female, husband, 33 male, stayed with his high school ex-girlfriend during the massive Texas winter storm. Both my husband and I grew up in a town called Denton, northwest of Dallas. We went to the same high school but didn't connect until after college when we were both living in a new city. I thought we had an amazing marriage. For backstory, I couldn't stand him in high school. He was part of this group that included his ex-girlfriend who had been my literal enemy since grade school. Almost everyone from high school got along when we'd see them, but she remained truly evil and our feud would start right back up every time we'd go back to Denton. He used to tease me for it but I didn't care, I hated her. Fast forward to the massive storm. It just so happened that husband was in Dallas that week for work. I don't remember the exact day now, but he called me, said power was out so he had no cell phone battery, and his flight had been cancelled and he was going to try to make it to see friends in Denton, about an hour away. When he finally made it home, he said all went okay but was actually uneventful. I took that to mean he didn't want to talk about it. No problem I was happy he was safe and home. Fast forward to yesterday, the gossip had gotten around Denton and back to me that he had never made it out of Dallas, and he'd actually stayed at his ex-girlfriend's place, who lives in Dallas proper now. I was so angry my head almost exploded because I felt so deceived. I called my best friend in Denton to ask her what she knew, and she told me that his ex-girlfriend had been to town and casually mentioned that my husband shacked up with her and was her storm buddy. I was so angry I almost packed up and moved out, but I waited for him to get home, and he was calm, I wasn't. He said the situation in Dallas was so bad and the roads were so impassable, that he would have died had he tried to make it to Denton. He said her apartment was in walking distance to where he was and she was the absolute last resort. He said they agreed right off the bat that because of the history, they would stay in totally separate rooms the entire time he was there, and not even be in the kitchen together. I asked why he didn't tell me, and he said he's never seen me as mad as I get to anything relating to her, and he felt it was best to be honest and answer my questions but I'd never asked if he made it to Denton or who he stayed with, true, I guess. I'm so hot under the collar over this, angry doesn't even begin to describe how I feel. But I don't want to make any rash decisions being that I'm so angry. What do I do here? Why did he lie? Now for the top advice before reading the updates. That's messed up. I find it very hard to believe that he had no other option than staying with his ex. And if that was truly the case, why not be honest about it? It just so happened that husband was in Dallas that week for work. Where was he staying when he was there for work, and why couldn't he just continue to stay where he was? At a major hotel chain that apparently had major freezing and flooding issues, and apparently couldn't get checked in anywhere else in Dallas. He could have called and asked for your permission. He could have called you first thing it happened and let you know. He could have told you when he got home. He could have brought it up when you asked him how his trip was. He only told you because you heard from other people. You could have called the hotel he could have stayed in, if it was even true about not being able to check in. I find this to be extremely disrespectful and hard to believe nothing happened. He is manipulating you saying if you wanted him dead if not being able to go there. Honesty is very important in this situation, and he lied for a reason. Only people that have nothing to hide tell the truth no matter what. He didn't tell you because of how mad gun you get? Wow. I bet you not only got madder but also felt betrayed and incredibly depressed to find out through the gossip mill, that the mean girl was going around your hometown telling everybody that she shacked up with your husband and they were storm buddies. I don't know if he cheated, but he sure didn't seem to care about you. I know and it breaks my heart. Some people lie because they are afraid the reaction. I can see that if your husband is one. I'm kind of shocked you didn't ask exactly where he was and who he was staying with though. We have hundreds of sets of family and friends who live in the area, I just assumed he would have been with any of them. Edit, thank you everyone who's posted so far. I have not spoken to my husband and am staying in our second bedroom, because I'm so angry I'm afraid of what I might say to him. But I woke up to this email from her, names changed obviously. Deanna. I really need to apologize to you for my actions over the past few days and I think we should clear the air about recent events. Amber Smith let me know how angry you are with Tony because he stayed in my apartment during the storm. I also assume this means you are angry with me. She also told me you are thinking about leaving him over this. I don't know what you've heard or what Tony has told you, but I swear on my children nothing happened between us, and he only stayed with me out of pure necessity. I understand how bad this looks, especially considering our history, but before you do something stupid and leave a great guy, at least hear me out. 
You probably don't know that the reason Roger and I broke up is because he cheated on me with multiple women. It broke me in ways you can't imagine. So I completely understand how you are feeling suspecting something happened. It hurt me so bad that I swore I would never make another woman feel like that. You are no exception to this. I love Tony for all he was in my life and for the friendship we've maintained, but I have the utmost respect for his marriage, even with me and your history. Tony called me stuck in the middle of downtown with a dying cell phone, and it turns out he was minutes away from my apartment and he initially came over to charge his phone and make calls. Things got worse and he couldn't make it to Denton, so I offered him to stay with me. I was insanely busy those two days so we maybe said two words to each other the whole time he was here. He stayed in my son's room and absolutely nothing happened. I don't know what's going on in your house right now, but I hope this jives with what Tony told you. I know he was open and honest with you like he's always been and I hope my accounting of events clears your head a little bit. I would never cheat with your husband or any man. I know the hurt. And now for the update. This may be a long update so sorry in advance, but I got so much good from this sub and the comments on my last post that I wanted to keep everyone updated on what really went down maybe why it happened the way it did and how we plan on handling things like this in the future. One thing I probably maybe tickled truth to guys within my last post, is how angry I am capable of getting. I probably approach and maybe step over the line into rage. I'm not proud of this at all and I think this episode shows me how much my actions have hurt the people I love. My husband is 6 foot 4 jujitsu guy and I'm 5 foot 2. And though he loves me, he's also very afraid of me. That was a very sad and eye-opening realization and I'm going to figure out how to correct my issues. So what he says happened, he was checked out of his hotel on the way to airport when he got notice his flight was cancelled. His iPhone charger was not working, it is very frayed, and he called me to let me know he wouldn't be home then started making calls back to hotel, who were already full, and to people we knew in the area. He got in touch with our friend Jonathan, who said that his ex-girlfriend, Deanna, not real name lives about two minutes from where he was downtown area. He called her and she said he could come over and charge his phone and figure things out. He got to her apartment and called my parents, my brother and my sister's husband, and all advised him to stay off the roads and not try to make it to Denton. He made more calls, but as the situation got worse, it became clear to him he should probably just stay put. Deanna said that her kids were with their dad, and he could stay in her son's room. He said they didn't really interact because she was very busy with work and making sure her kids and family were okay. I asked him why he didn't tell me, and he basically said that he was terrified of how I would react, and felt it was better to lie by omission than risk me getting angry. Especially with my history with Deanna. We had a long talk, and I had to be honest with him that I probably would have been really upset, and I was. But I need to work on my reactions. We also talked that I feel he needs to be much better at communicating, because his way of no news is good news just isn't working for me, and that I emotionally got through him being in the middle of a killer storm with no communication because I'm used to it, not because it's right or I like it like that. But obviously implicit in that, is I can't freak out anytime he gives me bad news. A lot of you guys asked how he would have her number and how she would have my email address. The truth of that is we are friends with all the same people back home, and we've been on group texts and email chains together for well over 10 years. I have her number in my phone, not saved as a very nice name, and could have easily found her email if I needed. So that part is not very strange at all. I also did a lot of soul searching on why I hate her so much, because in the end she ultimately did a really nice thing for the husband of a woman who hasn't been very nice to her for over 25 years. I don't know if I would have done the same thing for her, I really don't. She did spread it around Denton that he stayed with her. I wish she hadn't done that. But whether or not she used terms like shacking up and storm buddy, I don't know if that's true or the town gossips just added their spin. We are friends with all the same people, whom I love, but our spat has provided years of entertainment and gossip for everyone we are still in contact with. So thank you to everyone for all the help. I have a lot of work to do on myself and maybe the true irony of all of this, is that the person I've hated the most in my life, might be the impetus for me being a better person. Edit, lots of people commenting about why he didn't drive to other friends house. First of all, Everyone told him to stay of the roads if he could help it. Also, not sure if people realize how huge DFW is. I remember from my childhood in Denton, it would take us almost two hours to go from our side of town to visit my grandparents who lived in Terrell which is also part of DFW. So your husband and entire family thought it better to lie to you instead of telling you a mildly uncomfortable turn of events because your temper is just that bad. Either you are an abusive spouse or something is missing here. 
I'm sure lots of people on here will jump to congratulate you on figuring out you were not nice, good for you I guess. Be better. I feel like something seriously is missing. My ex lied constantly about stuff. He'd say it was because he was scared of my reaction. Later I learned that meant, my mom has me by the balls and I am scared of her reaction, and will do anything and lie to anyone to avoid conflict with her. I once watched him lay up, down, inside, out and backwards, to get out of overtime at work when his boss would have taken no for an answer anyway. This was because, his mom needed help preparing dinner. Some people lie just to lie. I believe wholeheartedly that OP's husband was lying and OP is probably lying too. I am 100% certain OP's husband was caught cheating and put a spin on it to mitigate his share of damage. I am 100% sure OP has been openly outed as abusive to friends and family. I am 100% sure they are in a stalemate of sorts right now. You all sound like you're a bunch of teenagers. I was genuinely shocked to see your age. It's juvenile. You have her number saved under a horrible name? WTF? Just delete the number and keep to yourself. It's a thing. When people get back with the people they grew up with, they revert back to their same attitudes. Say you were a shy nerd in high school. The went to college and became confident. Chances are, when you go to your class reunion, you'll revert back to feeling awkward and shy. I've noticed this quite a bit among the people I went to high school with. I was invited to join a Facebook page for graduates of that year. You can tell which ones stayed in the same town and still have the same friend circle. It's like they never finished maturing. Those of us who left are different. It takes a big person to practice self-reflection. I'm glad things worked out for you. Change is hard, but so rewarding. Damn, and I'm here thinking if this was a man making a woman feel so scared of him that she would lie just to not deal with his uncontrolled rage, would there be so many messages congratulating him on realizing he is an abusive partner? Because I'm guessing no. And you know why there wouldn't be any? Because horrible people don't deserve to be congratulated just because they realize they're mistreating and have been mistreating someone else for years, they first have to apologize profusely, then work as hard as they physically can to get rid of their bad behavior, and then and only then, they may deserve to be congratulated. But oh yeah, I forgot, this isn't a man who is being horrible, but a woman. So yeah, whatever, screw him right? Yas Queen, good on you for realizing your horrible scum, get him girl. Unfreaking believable. Now for the next story. I, 25 female, am pregnant and just discovered my boyfriend, 34 male, criminal record that includes domestics, restraining order, and prison time. Do I confront him with what I found? I will start off saying I know better. I know this but I got caught up. I have been with my boyfriend for a year and it was a love at first sight type of thing. We met and clicked immediately. It wasn't long until we were with each other every day. He's charming, sweet and everything I was looking for. He'd shower me with gifts. In the stages of getting to know each other, I asked him lots of things and took what he said as truth. He had disclosed that he was divorced with a child from that previous relationship. She lives across the country, so he doesn't get to see his child often. He felt bad about that and I always consoled him when it got to him. He told me he's been sober almost four years now. He often talks about being tempted but attends meetings regularly. Fast forward and I find out I'm pregnant. This was completely unexpected and unplanned for me. I was honestly scared and told him. He reacted really positively, nearly overjoyed. He even said he gets a second chance now. I'm now 5 months along. I moved in a month ago with him. It's an adjustment but things had been okay. 2 weeks ago, he became very clingy. He had to know where I was and needed to be with me all the time. Then yesterday happened. I was out running errands and he's blowing up my phone. I let him know I'd be home soon. I got home and he's drunk in the middle of the afternoon. He said that he needed me and he couldn't handle it so he drank. I had never seen this from him. He said things about his ex and his child. He said he would find them. I found it odd but was focused on getting rid of the alcohol and him to bed. I poured out what little was left and put him into bed. This morning he calls his sponsor and is meeting with him along with attending some meetings. I can't shake some of the things he said. I decide to try looking some things up and find myself looking at his mugshot. He's got a history of domestic charges. His ex-wife has a restraining order on him that he violated to the point of being in prison for three years. So yes, those three years of sobriety was this. Anyways, I'm emotional and frankly scared. This isn't who I know. I feel stuck and I don't know what to do now. Do I ask him about this and why he lied about it? Now for the top advice. 
Get out while you can. Do not confront him, just leave. He lied by omission. Love flooded you. Got you pregnant. Got you moved in. Became possessive. Became more possessive. Blamed you for his relapse. Said horrible things. This is classic abusive relationship stuff. Don't confront him. Call a friend, have them with you while you pack a bag, leave without saying anything. Cut contact. Get somewhere safe. Do not look back. Thank you. It will take some planning, but I will begin to put together an exit plan. I will keep you in my thoughts. Never feel badly about this and never doubt yourself. You recognized it. That will make all the difference. Thank you. I'm feeling very jumbled in my mind. I'm anxious about this whole situation. Sounds like a sociopath. Run and run now. Or you will be the next victim in this story. He lied. He lied about a lot of things. Confronting him might put you in danger. Just go. Asking him he'll just lie more and he'll find some way to project that to you. Drink and repeat this cycle in order to keep you trapped in this web. Thank you. I need to begin figuring out an exit plan he doesn't know about. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.